The future of progressive radio. This is the Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress 127. Try to climb down. I think that was... And welcome back to the Nobi Dollar Show. Wednesday, November 13th, we're live in studio to help us make sense of exactly what happened today, but talk about his brand new book. It is Malcolm Nance, national security expert, over 30 years experience, MSNBC contributor, New York Times bestseller, and brand new book, which is going to make the bestseller list maybe number one and knock out Donald Trump Jr., The Plot to Betray America, How Team Trump Embrace Our Enemies, Compromise Our Security, and How We Can Fix It. Malcolm, good to see you, my friend, in studio. I'm always glad to be here. So my my friend, let me, we'll talk the book, but it intersects a lot what we're seeing now in this very, what's going on with the impeachment. I got to get your reaction first thing. Robert Mueller testifies on July 24th. July 25th, Trump gets on the phone and talks to the president of Ukraine and asks for help. Is is he just a brazen criminal? Is there something we're missing here? Is it sociopathic? Well, sociopathic, certainly. But I, I think we had this discussion when my last book was out, The Plot to Destroy Democracy. Yeah. And what I expand on, you know, my first book, Plot to Hack America, was that quick shot how Russia did this, how it had to be organized. And that turned out to be incredible, just completely true. It took, exactly. It took like 25 months for the next book to come out uh, that, that, that said the exact same thing, only four times more words. Uh, the second book, Plot to Destroy Democracy, was a deep dive of Putin's strategic plan to disable the United States, m- you know, making Russia great again by destroying America and introducing chaos, and all of the active measures that he used, and then how he co-opted virtually most of Europe's right-wing conservative parties. They are now the conservative firebrand in the world, uh, mainly backing fascist-type candidates. So this book is about Team Trump and their dirty tricks and how they organized to take advantage of everything from the first two books and then, you know, essentially engineer an election and then re-engineer the United States into what I call a constitutional autocracy where the Constitution and the Bill of Rights are a fig leaf and are applied to some people but the United States becomes an autocracy under Donald Trump because Vladimir Putin is setting up autocracies all over the world. And he funds them through the oligarchy or he just funds them directly like he did in Hungary and France and Brexit and all those things. So there was an allegation that Trump keeps making and it was brought up today by Republicans that the Ukraine was the one that actually interfered in our 2016 election. As a national security expert, do you... Is there any, even a scintilla of truth to that? Maybe there is. I'd love to hear the truth here. I'm going to, let me describe that in a, we have some very technical intelligence terms (laughs) that we use. And um, one of the most technical terms that we use uh, indicates when you have no signs of ground truth, but that the information is brought out to, to be introduced into the me you know into the narrative sphere right in order to you know execute in deception operation and that technical term is crazy <laughs> that's <laughs> it's because cra- the way you say crazy that's what makes it that's crazy <laughs> right. and let me tell you only a couple of times in my career where I've been introduced to someone's phenomenally stupid plan. Uh, or I've heard, you know, what you just did, which is describe a conspiracy theory of the nuttiest info warrior type. Uh, that is what this is. This concept that uh, Russia didn't attack the United States, uh, all of the information we collected, including Dutch intelligence, actually hacking the cameras at their office so that we could see each individual Russian intelligence officer log in into their classified safe room and then watch them through their computers log in and start hacking the United States. Granted, all that stuff is, which is why we have their real names in the Mueller indictment. We know every individual who laid hands on a keyboard at Russian military intelligence headquarters because we're good at some (laughs) things. So this being the, the belief that Everything that every person has ever seen or said is a lie and that, in fact, the pro-West, pro-European Union, pro-NATO government of Ukraine 
actually stole the servers from the DNC and then bought them to the Ukraine or something and that they hacked the DNC in order to put the blame on poor Vladimir Putin, an ex-KGB officer who has KGB officers as his top four advisors and who directed Russian military intelligence to attack the United States. You have to be at a certain level of absolute delight illusion to believe something so crazy but where did this crazy story come from from what we're hearing and reporting the man that Mueller couldn't talk to who was in the room with donald trump jr at trump tower and who was with paul manafort and took polling data and passed it on to oleg um deripaska was was konstantin kalimnik former russian intelligence officer who disappeared after the during the Mueller investigation, and it's been said that he and Rudy Giuliani manufactured this story in order to get Russia off the hook, which means everything we're hearing about Ukraine is designed to get Russia off the hook and the sanctions raised and friendship, peace, love, and happiness, and Donald Trump, the opportunity to build Trump Tower in Moscow after this. This is the nuttiest story I have ever heard, and this is why I predict Donald Trump will have a black shroud over his presidential portrait when he leaves office. And he deserves it. You know, I want to, it's not in your book here, but I have to ask you as a national security expert, we learned in a recent indictment of Giuliani's associates, Fruman and Parnas, last May, not this May, last May, meets with Congressman Pete Sessions from Texas, sits down with him, says, we're going to raise money. You help us get rid of Marie Ivanovich. And he sends a letter. That day to Pompeo, right. she's bad-mouthing you. We're trying to figure out why Giuliani, because then Giuliani publicly were bad-mouthing her. So it was a coordinated effort by yes, these three and whoever else was involved to get rid of Yovanovitch. She's testifying Friday. Why do you think, is it about money? Is it about power? What do you think was going on that they wanted, last May, not this one, last May? You know, to be quite honest, there's there's an, we have this saying, and I, I think I've defined this a couple of times on this show, uh, where we, we, we refer to things as black holes. Mm -hmm. And black holes are is not an absence of intelligence. It's intelligence we can't see, but all other intelligence indicators bend in the direction of it. So we know that there's a force there right, right. pulling our indicators in that direction. And this is where I'm very different from a journalist, right? Journalists go, well, I interviewed... 10 guys and I came up with this analysis. I see a lack of information in a conversation and I know what must be there, what could be there, what should be there, and then of off probability of what may be there and the most remote possibility. In this discussion with Rudy Giuliani about the US ambassador to Ukraine, there is a missing element. Yeah. Okay, maybe Donald Trump just hates them. Maybe Donald Trump just likes people who are psychophants. Maybe Giuliani is taking this Kalimnik article or you know, argument and making it work. But what would worm into Donald Trump's mind that he himself would see this person as a threat and a person who must be dealt with? Right. In the harshest way must be removed. And what was the statement that he made that something's going to happen to her? You he know, did say that. Yes. Yeah. And, and it's very alarming to her. She testified. What's missing in this entire converse, in this entire discussion, that the indicators that point to me that there's a black hole is Donald Trump's even knowledge that she exists. And the fact that the Zelensky government. Right. She is there facing with the Zelensky government and. It's either, I have the Rudy Giuliani component of this story, but what's missing here is impetus for Donald Trump. And that impetus to me indicates that Russia itself mentioned casually that you know she's not working in your interest, Donald. You know our interest in Ukraine require us to support the great, you know, what was it? The great prosecutor that, that Joe Biden has taken out of power and then he is a good guy and trump repeats later that prosecutor i heard he was a good guy right yeah. we call this an nsa an absent conversation right there is an absent conversation there there's a black hole and i can reconstruct the conversation around that but what went into donald trump's ears 
that made him communicate with Giuliani positively about removing this person had to have been information that came from either a Russian oligarch and not up to Donald Trump, down to Donald Trump. And the only down to Donald Trump where he would download information that he would later repeat to himself or the public as a fact comes from these unknown conversations with Vladimir Putin. That's very interesting. And I have a friend, this is going to sound like a conspiracy, but this guy's actually a really up and up uh, credible guy who travels the world a lot, rich guy. He emailed me out of the blue. Um, he saw me on MS on Joy's show. He goes, oh, you were on with Rob Reiner. And he goes, he goes, you know what's upsetting? Because I was in the Ukraine talking to people, and they said they were so upset that no one's tying this to Russian mafia and the Russian mobs involved and a lot of the money here. And he goes, your American media is not talking about this at all. He goes, someone has to. And I go, but you, no one's going to write about it. You just go, I've talked to Ukrainians. We need a real source. What, what's your, I don't know how strong the Russian mob why is. Do, is that a, why do I even have to say this? Okay. Craig Unger wrote a book called House of Putin, House of Trump. OK, and it's about Trump's relationships with the Russian mafia and the Russian mafia. OK, when you talk about Ukraine, I want all listeners to do this. I want you to split the country into two. Right. And on the right hand side, I want you to put the people who are pro West, pro NATO, pro democracy. And those are the people who took power after pushing the people on the, the right. OK. Did I say the right or left? Doesn't matter. On the other hand, pro Moscow, pro Putin, pro oligarch, right? The people who paid Paul Manafort seventy million dollars under the table in order to have him engineer attacks on U.S. Marines that were visiting for NATO exercises. And these people are paid and work with the Russian oligarchy and the Ukrainian and Russian mafia. That is the two sides of this story. And that's why the story is so fascinating. But when you say pro-Moscow Ukraine, just say Moscow. Because they are these are the Ukrainians who want to be push the country back back not only in the sphere of Moscow, to be essentially a vassal state like Belarus, to where you can't even tell it's left the Soviet Union, right? Right. Moscow believes and Putin believes none of these countries should ever have left the Soviet Union. I've heard that. So let's talk about your book here, The Plot to Betray America. Really, folks, well-researched. There were things in there I had no clue. One, of course, I thought, I'm sure it jumps out to everyone, that Trump's first wife, Ivana, who was not a U.S. citizen when they married, that the Czech Secret Intelligence Service began doing surveillance of Donald Trump during that time, or like was the 1970s or early 80s. Yeah. What did they find interesting in Donald Trump? Money, an American with a boatload of money. Look, th- before you get to that part, you're going to read a section of the book called uh, Vlad- Vladimir Vladimirovich Baby Spy, <laughs> and it's t- it's about. It's about Putin's time in East Germany, yeah. in the city of Dresden, uh, in a beautiful neighborhood. He lived in a neighborhood that the, the composer Schumann lived in, and uh, that was spared the firebombing of, of 1945, mm. right? So beautiful neighborhood with a KGB torture center. But he lived in a very nice villa, and I got access to this villa, uh, and I found out from the woman who, who took it over that they pried microphones out of every doorframe. Every door frame. And the purpose of it was to say every one of you could be listened to at any time by one of the others, right? Or another KGB team who could be in another building listening to you. So you're always at risk. But Putin was a young spy at that time. And his job was to go get people from the West and turn them into spies for the East. But he learned there how to manipulate people into being agents against their will. When the Soviet Union collapsed and Rush East Germany was about to reunify with West Germany, the first thing he did when all the Russians were being recalled to Moscow to be discharged from the KGB, because there was no longer going to be, a, you know, KGB was going to be turned into a rump organization. He went to East German Stasi headquarters and got the binder of all the Western businessmen 
that had become East German agents. Wow. And these are German, could be tourists, but they were all people from the West. And they said that he used that to his advantage as a growing businessman by calling up and going, you remember your trip to Dresden in 1976? <laughs> and we had this little talk and you said, okay, I will work for you if you give me advantage on contracts. Yes, now you are working for me. Really? Yeah. And he manipulated people. and But more importantly, when he went to the city of St. Petersburg with his old mentor, this, the mayor of St. Petersburg, he reined in the Russian mafia using ex-KGB tactics, techniques and techniques because the only people the Russian mafia feared was the KGB because they were just a bigger mafia. So this is how Donald Trump got on their radar. All of the reporting from Russian from Czech intelligence went to the KGB. All of those documents went into a file. And when they saw the rich American who was flamboyant and blah, 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 and poor behind the Iron Curtain, Czech Republic, or at that point, I think it was the People's Democratic Republic of Czechoslovakia, they were interested in him because money influenced people. They assigned a spy to him. The number one informant was Ivana's father. Uh, the funny thing is, all of this reporting I did, I, I'm not taking credit for it. Um, it's repetition from articles written by The Guardian, Build.de, Check 24 television channel, which had the documents in their possession from Czech intelligence, because it was old communist stuff that was just left in warehouses later. And then, and um, Craig Unger also wrote about it in his book. So all there's multiple people have reported this. It's just, I've managed to put it together with the stream that Vladimir Putin at some point would have gone into that dossier, or his staff intelligence officers would have looked at decades of intelligence collection against Donald Trump and said, this one is an idiot. He is too, <laughs> truly manipulable, but we can use him. And, and it seems- That's that, my accent. It's, a, it's very good. It goes in and out, but it's pretty good. You have a Nance's Law of Intelligence Kismet, <laughs> or coincidence takes a lot of planning, yeah. which I found really intriguing. Tell us Nance's Law of Intelligence Kismet. Coincidence takes a lot of planning. And so yeah. that you don't, so do you sincerely not believe there's any kind of coincidence that deals with these kind of actors out there? I don't mean in real life. Well, I mean, I, I've actually co-opted this frame. That's actually a U.S. intelligence oh, it is? You know, dictum that no one named, so I, I took it. Um, the old saying used to be was, was by Ian Fleming, uh, for, yeah, who created book, James yes. Bond. And, you know, it was uh, one time is happenstance, two times coincidence, three times enemy action. Right? And we long stopped believing that. If I see you once, I see you once. If I see you twice, you're a coordinated effort to see me. And if I don't do that, if I then, you know, the 100 times it's really coincidence and the 100th time that it's a coordinated effort and I ignore it, then it could do me harm. Sure. So the same thing goes with the Trump administration. There are no coincidences here. Konstantin Kalimnik shows up at Donald Trump Jr.'s meeting in Trump Tower, of which Mueller would not charge him on the basis that he was ignorant of the law. Every other person in America goes to prison for that. Ignorance of the law is no is is no um, is no defense. Right. I believe is the phrase. Exactly, it is. Kalimnik's in the room. Ex-Russian intelligence officer there with all the rest of, you know, Natalia Veselnitskaya and all the rest there to convince them to um, that they had dirt on Hillary Clinton, but actually to talk about raising the sanctions under the Magnitsky Act. You know, and then he pops up again. Best friend of Manafort had been with Manafort for years. And then they pass on micro targeted polling data to him. That goes to a Russian oligarch who's a billion, billion, billionaire. Okay. And then all of that micro targeting apparently was used in three precincts, three counties in the United States, and Trump wins by just 77,000 votes. You know what? Nance's I, law of intelligence. Nance's Kismet. law, right? I'm chatting with Malcolm Nance about his brand new book, which we got to make it a bestseller for. I, even though I could get a free copy, I bought a copy to support my friend Malcolm Nance, The Plot to Betray America, How Team Trump Embraced Our Enemies, Compromised Our Security, and How We Can Fix It. Can I make one question, comment? Sure, of course. If there's any one reason for you to buy this book, and I mean buy it tonight, okay? <laughs> my, my dear friend Martin Sheen, 
President Bartlett from the West Wing sure. wrote the forward. And the first time I read it after he had read it, modified it, and sent it back, I read it and I got like a little guy cry. That's very it nice. It was R- beautiful that. and brilliantly written. And if, uh, go ahead. If you read it in his voice, it's it's like you got a free episode of The West Wing. So let, let's ask, we, we got a few minutes here. You had Hydra 2.0. We talked oh. Hydra in the first book, yeah. hi, destroying America's security from within. And this time it was about the internal threat that the United States has endured during the Trump era are incredible, the dangers for the amount of damages he's done in a, such a short period of time. What, what are some of the worst things? I mean, you talk about Helsinki in July 2018. But if he is reelected, just worst case, Will we pull out of NATO, or what, what will we yeah. do? We'll all, anything to help Russia? Is that the, the, the I, uh, deciding factor? Well, we're we're probably going to see. I mean, the damage is about to be done anyway. You're you're going to see that. Okay. Um, we learned just this week that there were two events that we didn't know about where he directly intervened to damage U.S. national security to assist Russia. One was Mick Mulvaney. Um, it was reported Mick Mulvaney had actually, under Trump's orders, canceled a first shipment of Javelin missiles to Ukraine. And the phrase that he said was, um, this might reflect badly on Russia, or we, we're afraid of how right. this will, the Russians will, will reflect on this, how the Russians will take it. Hey, we don't send really advanced anti-tank missile systems to the Ukraine with the intent to destroy Russian tanks and go, oh, they might not like it if we send those to this. That was a compromise of our security. It meant that we were now working in Russia's interest, not America's interest, because it is in America's interest to have an ally have those missiles sure. so that if the Russians invade, Russia won't invade if they know they have javelins. Javelins are good missiles. Deal breakers are what we call them, right? Really? You that aim good. it, you put laze it, you pull the trigger, you run, because the missile will do everything else. And the, the Russians will be sitting there, and missiles will start raining on them, and they'll be like, no one's aiming them. They don't have to aim them. Once they see you, you're dead. So Ukraine really wants those missiles, right? Because they have Russian forces invading their country. So that being said, um, you know, uh, Donald Trump also canceled a naval exercise in the Black Sea because he saw a CNN report saying the U.S. Navy is aggressively pushing Russia back in the Black Sea. He called the Defense Department and canceled that exercise, what we call a freedom of navigation exercise. If we don't carry those out, then Russia can de facto say they own the Black Sea. And we have been exercising freedom of navigation operations since the American Revolution. Oh, it's just disgusting. My friend, and folks, Malcolm, I, I, we'll talk about this more. I'm happy to talk about the book again. I know you're only in town for two days. Uh, the Plot to Betray America, How Team Trump Embraced Our Enemies, Compromised Our Security, and How We Can Fix It. And r- right near the end, you have this line that we are in the winter of the American Republic, and we must make the choice to be the winter soldiers who stand by the nation when the sunshine faux patriots seek to sell it to out to our ideological enemy. Well written, and this is the fight. These are the stakes, are they not? These are the stakes right now in front of us. This year, this upcoming election, will define whether America ceases to exist as it's existed for 244 years and becomes a constitutional autocracy or whether we save American democracy and go back to that incremental camaraderie that we have had forever, even when it was broken in the Civil War. I suspect we are on the edge of the end of the American experiment. And if you don't freaking vote, it will end. These are the stakes, my friends. All right, Malcolm, great seeing you. The book is great, folks. I cannot recommend them. Pick it up. Let's knock Donald Trump Jr. out of the top spot. Yeah, let's Malcolm, trigger him. Let's trigger the triggered idiot. Be right back with <laughs> Julian Zelizer right here on the Dean Obadala Show. Dean Obadala Show on Sirius XM Progress 127.